St. Jerome Chapel, Waterloo Catholic District School Board by Donka Kochoba. St. Jerome, patron of this chapel, is presented through an icon. His life story is in the pictures on the inside rim of the icon, starting from the top left picture and continuing counterclockwise because time did not affect the influence and the example of St. Jerome's life. In this chapel, the altar, priest's chair, ambo, and tabernacle are arranged in a modern style, unifying the simplicity and practicality with the beauty of the broken arch found in the sacred Gothic style. The round altar is the unifying center, which invites everyone equally. Twelve identical parts forming the frame of the altar symbolize the twelve apostles. The three parts of the ambo symbolize the Holy Trinity. The light not only enters the room during the day, but also shines out of the sacred space at night. In this chapel, a place of quiet and reflective peace, Glass paintings portray the history and contributions of all the religious communities which were instrumental in creating the Catholic School Board in this region. On the front side of the chapel is a glass painting dedicated to the Congregation of the Resurrection. The Holy Trinity is illustrated in the glass painting using these symbols the heart as symbol of the Father's love, the dove and breeze in the cloth wrapped around Jesus' resurrected body as symbol of the Holy Spirit, the golden cross as a symbol of victory of the Son of God. From the symbols of the Holy Trinity stream colorful rays, they shine through everything, and they are a part of everything. By this, the artist wants to symbolize God's almighty presence and love. From the crown of thorns on his head spring green leaves, and it becomes a victory garland. The golden crown marks the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In the background, on Jesus' left, is depicted night and on his right, awakening day. Night and day, planets and stars, earth, sea, water, rocks, mountains, plants and all living creatures. He is the king of the whole universe. A piece of white cloth blowing around Jesus' resurrected body symbolizes a breeze and promises the descent of the Holy Spirit. The picture on the right side captures the moment when the apostles, John and Peter, enter the empty tomb looking for Jesus' dead body, and angels tell them that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. It also depicts Mary Magdalene, who finally recognizes Jesus in the gardener and is filled with joy. The artist chose these moments to encourage everyone in their search for Jesus. The left side of the glass painting captures the story of the miraculous catch of fish that took place after Jesus' resurrection, John 21. Then Jesus leaves the ministry of the church 
to St. Peter. The moment captured on the glass painting is of Peter, in his excitement runs towards Jesus to greet him. The fishing net symbolizes the church. On the sides of the glass painting of the Resurrection are two glass paintings, the Ten Commandments and the Eight Beatitudes. Both of these themes symbolize the importance of teaching in a Catholic school. The artist chose this story to encourage everyone who is struggling with fishing, discouraged by failing, to have more patience, to pray and to trust that Jesus performed miracles in the past and still does today. Faith is a gift. This window is dedicated to honor the School Sisters of Notre Dame. This glass painting depicts Mary in the desert holding a young Jesus. It was inspired by a message that Don Gobi, father of the Marian movement of priests, says he received from Mary. In this message, he says that the desert mentioned in the Bible, Revelation chapter 12, 14 to 16, refers to our hearts, which are parched and thirsting for God. Her message to us is, I want to give you Jesus' heart. The school sisters of Notre Dame have touched the desert of many hearts over the years and have attempted to give us the heart of Jesus by dedicating their lives to teaching us God's ways through Mary. This window is dedicated to honor the sisters of St. Joseph for their untiring work to establish hospitals in the Hamilton Diocese and in particular St. Mary's Hospital in Kitchener. Jesus depicted here is that of a school-age boy. School teachers often have to substitute for missing family relationships and, in this way, can influence the development of children. Joseph, in a similar manner, physically substituted for Jesus' heavenly Father and is truly a model not only for all fathers, but also for all teachers. St. Joseph had to look after the material welfare of his family, and he did so working hard with his hands doing carpentry. In this picture, God's light shines on Joseph and Jesus. Joseph appears to enjoy the interruption from his work and smiles and hugs Jesus for his help. Jesus loves to be in his Father's presence and takes interest in what he's doing. The artist has tried to capture God's love and concern for all creation. Joseph holds a piece of wood in his hand and another is lying on the ground at his feet, a foundational building joint. But those two pieces prefigure the cross 
on which Jesus is to save the world and link heaven and earth. Joseph cut this wood, shaped and shaved it, just as our lives are shaped by good and bad times, pain and joy. Joseph prepares Jesus in his youth to understand joy and pain, how to carry a cross and ultimately to build his kingdom. The green tree leaves are a symbol of the beautiful, prayer-filled life lived by the Holy Family. The first window is dedicated to honor the Jesuit fathers who played a key role in the establishment of schools, convents, churches, an orphanage, and St. Joseph's Hospital. The second window honors the Carmelite sisters and their patron, St. Therese of Lisieux, 1873-1897. This painting depicts the founder of the Society of Jesus, Jesuits, St. Ignatius of Loyola, 1491-1556, surrounded by cameos of the Canadian martyrs. Since Jesuits are missionaries who minister worldwide, St. Ignatius is depicted standing on the earth. This globe, which presents not only a spiritual challenge, but an ecological one as well. The local Jesuit center takes up this challenge in the community farm which practices organic agriculture and fosters community while affirming their commitment to the land and the environment. St. Ignatius holds in his hands a book inscribed with the letters AMDG, signifying Ad Majorum Dei Gloriam, for the greater glory of God, the model of the Jesuit order. In this painting, St. Therese, smiling humbly, is standing in the middle of a rose bush to highlight the physical, spiritual, and emotional barbs of suffering she endured with love and patience during her brief life. Her suffering and its extent was known to her and God alone. She didn't search for suffering but she was not afraid of it, and it did come. She transformed these painful thorns with love and endurance into roses of joy and spiritual maturity. In her simple way, she changed suffering into love. Consequently, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, she reached unbelievable spiritual maturity in her young age and earned the title Doctor of the Church. Locally, the Carmelite sisters who live in a cloister near St. Agatha lead humble lives dedicated to God and vow to live out their lives in poverty, chastity, and obedience. They pray, fast, wear traditional habits, and don't leave the cloister. The sisters greet you with a smile reminiscent of St. Therese, saying the words, Praise be Jesus Christ.